and Valve is like Valve's a weird company, right? Like they're a company that very clear, like they're a company. They're trying to make money. Like that's what companies do, but they go out of their way to add things, whether it's to Steam or the Steam Deck or Linux, that aren't going to directly make them money. They might improve the user experience in some fashion, but in a lot of cases, it's not like, you know, fixing a crucial bug, making FSR easily available, like, giving you frame rate limiters. Like, that's stuff that's legitimately... Like, you can just say, this is useful for users. This is just like, someone is going to use this. Maybe there'll be like 10, 20, 100 people that really care about this feature. But that's usually not how you choose to implement a design decision. You want something to be, you know, thousands of people, tens of thousands of people when you're at the scale, hundreds of thousands of you at the scale of something like Steam. But not Valve. And then there's the things with just like general desktop Linux. Like there is a, a feature being worked on that I talked about on the main channel. I think the video, I think the video should be out now. Um, I've got it queued up as it stands right now. So it should be released by the time you guys are seeing this. Um, what the fuck? Oh, that's the wrong screen. Uh, my bad. What are you even seeing? Oh, this one. Okay. Uh, here we go. This is what I wanted to show you. Uh, introduce API for clients to hand off between compositors. So, this is a feature being worked on by David Edmondson. David Edmondson is doing this work as a contractor for Valve. So, you would think this has some, like, clear link to Linux gaming, to making, maybe even to making KDE better, because they do use KDE on the Steam Deck. No, it's going to improve KDE, but it's going to improve GNOME, it's going to improve Sway, it's going to improve Wayfire, it's going to improve fucking Cosmic. So the idea with compositor handoffs is, let's say you're your Wailing Compositor crashes. So right now, if your Wailing Compositor crashes, every window that you have open is also going to disappear. This is just the way that Wayland works. It doesn't have any way to reconnect the windows. And the Compositor, when the Compositor comes down, everything just falls down as well. Makes sense. Um, the idea with Compositor handoffs is if the Compositor crashes those windows don't necessarily disappear. If you reopen the compositor or another compatible... I think it's... I, I, I want to say it's or another compatible compositor, but let's just say it's the same one. Let's say you're using GNOME, GNOME crashes, and you had, I don't know, Get It open, and like Firefox and a bunch of other programs that you were using. So the idea here is... You could reopen the compositor and all of your windows would be returned with no data loss whatsoever. And the, the, the fun thing about this is this isn't something that would have to be implemented on the individual application front. This would need to be implemented at the compositor level, at the Wayland API level, and the GUI toolkit level. I guess also X Wayland, um, but not like... You know, not get it, not Caden Live, not VS Codium. It would need to be working for the toolkits and the libraries and things like that, and then it would just work. And this guy actually does have some demos of this working on this one. This is the GTK merge request, or yeah, merge request, and this should have a GTK demo. Yes. Uh, you know, I'll even give you his Scottish voice. GTK4 apps I can find. I've got Gnome Jess. Got GTK demo. I've opened the clipboard one just to show it that still works after restoration. And R notes, which is a drawing tool. Who's jump ahead? Ah, uh, no, right here. Okay. Mighty face. I'm not very good at drawing. But now if I restart Quint, I've still got my drawing. For my new additions. So, what he did there is 
basically crashed, or he ran a command that killed the compositor in a way that simulates a crash. Um, whatever the error code need to be to simulate a crash. And everything just came back. This is super cool. This is being done on KDE with GTK Windows. Ignore the, that fact. He did the same thing with uh, QT on KDE as well. And there's been stuff submitted to GNOME and GTK. Uh, the only major blocker, so though the, the toolkits work just fine right now. OpenGL games work just fine. So if you do like Super Tux Cart, for example, that's fine. Vulcan games don't. Um, so, like, and most games that you play are going to be DXVK games, so direct decks to Vulcan. So if you're playing, you know, Hogwarts, for example, you're playing Doom, you're playing fucking, I don't know, pick another game. Any, any game that's using direct decks, uh, that right now isn't in a state where it could reopen. But a patch has been submitted to Mesa to help address that happening. This kind of like, it's sort of frozen about three months ago. Not much work has really been done. There's been some work to just keep the uh, the merge request tracking with more recent commits, but there hasn't been any more like major discussion. I put out a video about this because I want this to be merged, and I right now I don't know if it's going to be. And it's one of those things where it really needs to be merged everywhere. Otherwise, it's not that useful. Like, if just your GTK windows are brought back open, that's great for GNOME users. If just your QT windows are brought back open, that's great for KDE users. But what about if you're a Sway user? I use QT and GTK windows. Doesn't... Like, it doesn't really help me to have half my shit reopen. Or what if you're a PopOS user and uh, all of your windows are iced? Neither of those things are going to affect you. Or maybe you have, like, one random GTK window or one random QT window because you're using, like, ProtonUp QT or Caden Live or GIMP or something like that. I don't... Th okay, to be fair, GIMP is never going to happen because GIMP is GTK2. This, the uh, commits being submitted right now are for GTK4, I believe. I think they're GTK4. Are uh, they definitely not GTK2? Um, so it's, yeah, it's GTK4. This could be brought into older versions, though. There's, like, there's, there's nothing stopping that happening. It's just the GNOME toolkit doesn't exactly maintain GTK2 anymore. So, like, they wouldn't be the ones doing it. And GTK2 is uh, effectively dead. Minus, uh, minus, uh, minus GIMP. GIMP is the only thing keeping GTK2 alive. So, yeah. This is cool. And I, I really do appreciate the work that Valve does. Generally, just getting the Linux desktop better. I think, like, I know, I know some people don't want to be, like, super trusting of Valve. They are still, like, major corporation, things like that. But it really does seem like they genuinely want the Linux experience to be good. It is for, like, their own reasons. Like, they want the Linux experience to be good because they want to have a contingency plan against Windows. They want to be in a position where if Windows, like, starts really going badly, they can be like, we have the Steam Deck. We have, uh, we have Linux. We have this. We have that. We don't give a shit. Because th the main reason why they really started to care about Linux, if I remember correctly... Uh, was back when Microsoft first introduced the the Windows Store. Like, they were worried about Microsoft going more down the, like, Apple route with iOS and macOS, where on macOS you can install things outside of the store, but, like, the primary way that people do things is through the store. And they had no interest in giving a cut of everything to Microsoft, which is totally fair. Like, if you can be in a position where you don't have to do that, Let's fucking go. And if it means that I get to play games on Linux and they get to work well, hey, that's great as well. Like, I'd love to be able to just download a game and it's rare that I find a game that doesn't work. There are so few exceptions now that are genuinely balked. Some games are like, 
a bit funky. Maybe they need some like tweaking and they're like bronze and have some, you know, crashing issues and performance issues. But the game works. Like that's the important thing. The game works. And if a game works, that means it can be very easily improved from there. A lot of the time it's just dumb little issues that need to be tweaked in Proton, things like that. And over time, you just get games that it's not just that game that improves. Like, if Proton improves and does something that... Like, if one game does something, a lot of the time, there's other games that have done the same thing as well. So if one game helps Proton improve, it generally just improves Proton for everything else out there. Like with um the way the cutscenes work. So a lot of older games use these cutscene codecs, like Devil May Cry 1, uh, which don't exactly work in wine. The uh, codecs are missing, and there's just issues around it. Uh, that's one of the games where you can't play cutscenes still. But other games using other codecs, they have been messed around with, and you can just play them just fine. No issue at all. Now, with more modern games, they use more open codecs where there's not an issue, and this issue just doesn't matter. But, for the games where it is an issue... It's, it's likely, like, game devs usually don't try to, like, completely reinvent the wheel. If, like, there is some standard that's being done on other games, they're especially if it's, like, from the same studio, they're likely going to be trying out a, uh, a similar thing themselves.